it's been so long since I've used Darktable and that made me think, am I still able to use it without too much hassle, right? So in this video, I'm going to show you some easy things to use so you can navigate through Darktable much easier. Let me show you. First thing is the shortcuts menu. If you move up here, the settings panel, this will open up. And then if you go to shortcuts, this is where you can find all the shortcuts that are being used in Darktable. And you can change them as well and make sure to read this message up here because it's very important if you want to change something. And let's say a buddy of you has a great shortcut setup. You can actually import his or you can export your own and then share it with the world, right? Okay, let's move on to the next one which is how to find the right modules. Because when you start Darktable, you have this quick access panel. And that will allow you to change some things like local contrast, work on the filmic RGB or the color balance RGB. But it might not have all the modules that you usually use in an image. Now, if you want to add some right mouse button, and then that allows you to remove some widgets or to add some widgets. Now these aren't all the widgets you can add because you can go up here and then that will allow you to choose any of the available modules within Darktable. So that's one way, but let's say you just want to work on the saturation. You can use the search modules by name or tag menu or bar and you can fill in contrast, right? Or you can fill in, as I said, saturation, right? And that will show you all the modules that allow you to change the saturation so the velvia one the color contrast filmic rgb color balance rgb which is my most favorite one by the way and the color balance one now the color balance rgb is my most favorite module and if we open that one up it kind of allows you to make some changes now what i've been taught is that you need to go to masks first and then hit this button the contrast gray fulcrum that's the most important one because it selects your image. Then you go back to the master tab. And the reason for that is because I want to explain these three things, right? Linear chroma grading, perceptual saturation grading, and perceptual brilliance grading. Now the linear chroma grading affects the chroma dimension proportionally to its input value at constant hue and luminance. So it does it globally with a flat coefficient using the global chroma, as well as on each of the shadows, midtones, and highlight masks right then we've got the perceptual saturation grading and that affects both the luminance and the chroma dimensions in a perceptual space proportionally to its input value at a constant u it does this globally with a flat coefficient using global saturation as well as on each of the shadows midtones and highlights mask now you can find this information within the dark table manual as well and then the final one is the perceptual brilliance grading and that affects both the luminance and the chroma dimensions in a perceptual space proportionally to its input value at constant u and in a direction orthogonal to the saturation its effect is close to that of changing exposure but scale perceptually it does this globally with a flat coefficient using the global saturation as well as on each of the shadows midtones and highlights mask right so that's the difference between excuse me so right so that's the difference between these three right now in practice, you should use the chroma setting if you want to preserve the scene linearity of the light emission and or keep the luminance unchanged. However, these changes might affect some use more heavily than others due to the fact that the color space is not fully perceptual scale. A saturation, so this one, is closer to the effect of mixing white paint with some base color. Reducing the saturation of red will degrade it to pink, while reducing its chroma will degrade to a gray shade at the same luminance. A saturation is perhaps a more intuitive way to interact with color due to its connection with painting, and it's usually the one you've heard about the most, uh, I guess. Right. Now, choosing one or the other is mostly a matter of deciding where on the lightness or chroma graph you want to push your colors and where they are to begin with. Now, to reach pastel colors, saturation is the way to go. Now, if you want to reach laser-like colors, so almost monochromatic, at the risk of losing synthetic, then chroma is the way to go. Now, and of course, when you work on your image, you also want to know what's sharp. And that's where we have these button first because these buttons do a lot of great things. The first one is toggle focus speaking mode, right? Now you see three colors. We see blue, we see green, we see yellow. 
And the difference between that is that yellow represents a large jump and gradient, indicating a very sharp edge. Now, green represents a medium jump and gradient, indicating a reasonably sharp edge. And then blue represents a small jump and gradient, indicating a slightly sharp edge. Which is kind of logical, because if we look at this image, then this seems to be in focus, and then these flowers are out of focus. And that makes sense if you look at the colors that you're seeing right here. Now the next one, the light bulb, is one that I use when I want to see if this image actually looks good. Because yes, we've got the gray area up here, but then if you post this somewhere on your Instagram or your Facebook, where there's usually a white background, you can see if the colors are still great. And to make sure that the colors are still great, you need to export this image. So let's close this. You need to go to export and then make sure that the profile is set to sRGB web safe. Because if you don't and you export the image, then there is a chance that the colors will change. Okay. And then the next one is this one. And that will show you what is being overexposed and underexposed. Now underexposed is in blue and overexposed is in red, which means that you'll have some things to work on in the image. Now, sometimes some areas will stay overexposed, of course, but it's a great way to see whether or not your image is perfectly balanced out. And speaking about balance, it's very important to have a straight horizon, right? Well, the most easy way to do that in dark table is to hold your right mouse button and then drag this line in. That will allow you to rotate or change the image any way you want, right? So if you drag this over a horizon that has a slight angle over it and you release it, then the image will automatically be straightened out, right? It doesn't work here, obviously, because we don't have a horizon, but the idea is still the same, right? Now, I already showed you how to export. You can use this menu up here, click it down, change the file format to whatever you like, change the quality, whether or not you want to, change sizes, allow upscaling. And like I said before, make sure the profile is set to sRGB, right? And that to me is how you can easily navigate through Darktable. So I showed you how to search for the modules that you need by using keywords like saturation or by using contrast. I showed you how to level an image very easily. I showed you how to export it and which color profile to use when you export it. And I showed you the menu where you can change the shortcuts as well. And I told you the difference between the linear chroma grading, perceptual saturation grading, and the perceptual brilliance grading. So stay tuned, make sure to subscribe, press that bell, do whatever you need because I will be editing this image in the near future. So stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Doei.